Uh, it's a great honor to be recognized here this evening. Uh, as I think all of you uh, know, and that's why you're here, uh, the issue of migration is among the most important and most contentious uh, issues of our time. And the role of the Migration uh, Policy Institute as the premier uh, think tank uh, dealing with this issue is of uh, ever-increasing uh, importance. Um, as, as I stand uh, before you here this evening, uh, I have to, I think, um, uh, tell you uh, just a, a little bit about my own uh, experience as a migrant. Uh, I was born in uh, Nazi Germany. Uh, I was an infant refugee with my uh, parents and my older sister uh, to England. Um, we arrived in England on August 16, 1939, uh, two weeks before the, um, the outbreak of World War II. And um, I, I don't have any recollection uh, of uh, Germany. I was two years old uh, when I left. Uh, but I do have um, infant uh, recollections of England. And um, the, the war brought out, uh, I think, the, uh, the very best uh, in uh, the, uh, the British. And uh, we were treated with um, extraordinary uh, generosity. Uh, first, the fact that we were uh, admitted at that point, which was simply a uh, life-saving gesture uh, by the, uh, the British. Um, at a certain point, we had a, a small flat uh, in London, uh, but we were bombed out, uh, and we had to be uh, evacuated. And uh, we were evacuated to a Midlands industrial town, uh, Kettering. It uh, was a boot and shoe manufacturing uh, town. Uh, and um, uh, almost immediately after getting there, uh, a family uh, opened its doors to us, not a well-to-do family. The, uh, the breadwinner was a bicycle repairman. Uh, we lived in um, that home and a town councillor um, who had the uh, appropriate name, Mr. Good, uh, took uh, interest uh, in us, uh, found my father a job. Uh, the job was uh, a bit of a distance from uh, where we were living, so uh, he arranged that a, another family should uh, take us in, this time an insurance agent. And on the basis of the job, my father was able to um, uh, put together the resources so we got a place of our own. Uh, so uh, my, my experience was uh, that it is uh, possible um, to uh, have an extraordinary, um, an extraordinarily positive experience um, as a migrant, that there is a spirit of generosity uh, that can be uh, elicited. Um, but why it is not elicited at different times and places uh, is, um, uh, of course, uh, something that one has to, uh, to wrestle with. Uh, the only footnote I would provide to that is that I was in Tunisia um, last month, uh, and uh, a couple of people in Tunisia said to me very proudly uh, that in the course of the, uh, the uprising against Gaddafi in Libya, uh, about uh, 200,000 uh, Libyans had fled across the border into Tunisia. And that um, in every case, they said, um, the refugees had been accommodated in private homes uh, that were open to them. So it is possible, uh, perhaps even in today's world, uh, to, uh, to repeat um, that kind of generosity. Uh, I think probably my, um, uh, my own experiences um, contributed to the fact that um, I have devoted my uh, career to rights. Uh, I first became professionally engaged in rights some um, uh, 49 years ago, uh, but in the last three and a half decades I have um, 
focused on uh, rights internationally. And though we um, uh, think about the, uh, the many um, uh, cases in which severe abuses of rights uh, take place, I, I think it's worth uh, pointing out um, how much of a transformation uh, has taken place um, during that period. Um, though the, um, uh, the countries of the former Soviet Union and the countries of uh, the former Soviet bloc um, have in some cases remained um, authoritarian uh, states, uh, some of them have also become democratic states, uh, and uh, there is nothing like um, the repression of that earlier period. Uh, when I started working on rights internationally, um, almost all countries of Latin America um, had military dictatorships uh, that engaged in um, extreme uh, abuses of rights. Uh, today, uh, they are flawed democracies for the most part, uh, but they are democracies uh, in almost all cases. Uh, and the, uh, the abuses of rights uh, have uh, diminished um, uh, in uh, enormous uh, ways. Uh, the same is true in, in Eastern Asia. Uh, when I got involved in the struggle uh, for rights, countries like South Korea and the Philippines uh, and Taiwan uh, were military dictatorships, and uh, they too were transformed. Uh, probably the, uh, the countries uh, that have made the, um, the greatest progress in rights in the last um, 10 or 12 years uh, are two large um, Islamic countries, um, Turkey and, and Indonesia. Uh, we don't know yet the, um, the outcome of the, um, the Arab uh, revolutions of the last uh, 16 months uh, or so, and uh, some of them uh, may not go well. Uh, at least the, uh, the country that I visited last month, uh, where this all started, Tunisia, does seem to be on its way to becoming a, a rights-respecting uh, democracy, and in that case, uh, it would be the, uh, the first of 22 Arab countries uh, to, uh, to acquire uh, that kind of political character. Uh, there has also been immense uh, progress for rights in, in West Africa, uh, so that in that region uh, today, countries like uh, Ghana and Liberia and uh, Sierra Leone and the Ivory Coast and Guinea uh, and Senegal have all had um, democratic um, transitions uh, and uh, rights-respecting uh, countries. And the fact that that kind of uh, transformation um, is taking place today in, in Africa uh, is uh, enormously uh, encouraging. Um, unfortunately, um, some of the, um, the greatest pressure uh, to restrict rights today um, takes place in the, um, the parts of the world um, where rights are best established and where there are the, uh, the greatest uh, protections uh, for rights. And I think of the, uh, the United States and even more than the United States uh, of the countries of, of Western Europe. Uh, so that countries um, which uh, were uh, particularly noted as liberal democracies, such as the Netherlands uh, and Denmark and Finland, uh, today have um, extreme right-wing uh, political parties that are putting significant pressure uh, on um, the, uh, the protection of rights. And uh, I would say there are two major um, issues that are driving um, this. Uh, one is the, um, the problem of terrorism, uh, and the other is uh, migration. And sometimes in the minds of those who are um, putting on the, uh, the pressure uh, for the restriction of, of rights, the, uh, the two are uh, conflated. Um, so that um, defending uh, rights in the countries where the greatest protections uh, exist, uh, where rights are, are best established uh, becomes an immensely important issue, and it has to be done uh, in the, uh, the context 
uh, of the issues that are driving um, those who, um, who seek uh, restrictions um, on uh, rights uh, protections. Uh, it's uh, because these issues are um, so important, particularly in the places uh, which have led the way for the world as a whole um, in the protection of rights, uh, that it, the, the work of the uh, Migration Policy Institute uh, becomes uh, especially important. One, one can't uh, solve all the problems uh, of migration um, by looking at the issues solely from uh, a right standpoint. Uh, there are issues of uh, public policy and good governance uh, that don't involve rights that have to be um, uh, in the foreground um, as one deals uh, with the issue of migration. But there needs to be a right sensibility um, in the way in which um, one addresses all of those issues. Uh, one needs to deal with um, the, uh, the, the importance of providing people uh, with equal treatment, um, with providing uh, people with fair proceedings, due process of law, uh, with dealing with people humanely, um, with focusing on the issue of integration, as Dimitriou um, has uh, said this evening, uh, in not visiting the, um, uh, the sins of the fathers and mothers uh, upon the, um, the children. Those, that kind of right sensibility um, has to be in the forefront um, as we deal with the, um, the difficult problems uh, that migration poses um, in uh, the United States, in Western Europe, and also in many other parts of the world. And it is because I believe that these issues are so significant uh, that uh, I value greatly the, uh, the work of the Migration Policy Institute, and I express my deep gratitude to uh, those who are responsible for choosing me as the recipient of this award. Thank you very much.